It has been said for many years that if the first thing you do each morning is eat a live frog, then you can go through the rest of your day knowing that that was the hardest thing you will have to do all day. Smith's Note Summary 24, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time. That is a fantastic title for a book, but please don't take it literally. Your frog is your biggest, most important task. The one that you will most likely put off when given the opportunity. Unfortunately, this one thing tends to be the main domino to set all other tasks in motion. By accomplishing it, we can say we had a productive day. If there are two frogs you have to eat, start with the ugliest one first. As the title suggests, Brian offers 21 ways to identify and make your frog easier to swallow. I'm going to go over 5 to 10 of my favorite ones. The first one, set the table. Decide exactly what you want to accomplish with a deadline. Be very specific with this. Open-ended goals always get put off, then forgotten. Write out your goals and objectives before you begin and include everything you will need to achieve them. When that is done, you can create a plan to get there. Number two, Apply the 80-20 rule to everything. 20% of your activities will account for 80% of your results. The things that give you the most return on your investment are the frogs. The other 80% of the things on your to-do list are just things to keep you busy. Doing the hard things first makes all your other tasks seem easier, even if they take the same amount of time. Idea number three, consider the consequences. Brian says, the mark of a superior thinker is his or her ability to accurately predict the consequences of doing or not doing something. This is not short-term thinking, this is long-term thinking. Your most important frogs are those that can have the most serious positive or negative consequences on your life. Idea number four, focus on key result areas. Identify and determine those results that you absolutely positively have to get to do your job well and then work on doing them all day long. Number five, the law of forced efficiency. This is a very simple idea. There is never enough time to do everything, but there is always enough time to do the most important things. You're already overworked and you're never going to get caught up. Once you get that and decide to focus on the frogs, You get the most important things done, which makes you more productive than many others. Idea number six, prepare thoroughly before you begin. This is a six P's concept. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Proper preparation includes knowing what you are doing. A huge reason for procrastination is not knowing how to do what needs to be done. Then a lack of confidence emerges and we wait for someone to come along and help or try to find the right time to ask for assistance. If you are not competent in a task, it is best to admit it immediately instead of trying to fumble your way through it and end up hurting the team. No one is going to fault you for not knowing something that is out of your area of expertise and they will be glad you spoke up before real issues occur. And that is a good segue to the next idea. Leverage your special talents. Determine exactly what it is that you are very good at or could be very good at and apply yourself to that. When Jack Welch was CEO of GE, he said GE had become too diversified. Some divisions had been created merely because people wanted things they made. He decided to do a complete overhaul of GE. All aspects of the company were looked at and compared to others. Resources and market potential were evaluated, and then the decision was made that all aspects of GE, where they could not be number one or number two in the world, would be sold or shut down. Very profitable divisions were sold off to focus on the few main things to get GE back at the top of their game. This method obviously worked because during Jack's 20-year tenure at GE, the stock rose 4,000%. Embrace what you are good at and roll with it. Next idea, put pressure on yourself. Have you ever noticed that when you are getting ready to go on vacation or for a long weekend, you get a ton of work completed? Why is that? 
Well, psychologists say there are two major reasons for this. One reason is we don't want other people to critique our systems and tactics. The other reason, the social aspect, meaning we don't want to create animosity with our coworkers by them having to do our work for us or the possibility of them doing it incorrectly. Here is a good way to get more done in the next two days than you did in the last two weeks. Imagine that you have to leave town for a month and work as if you had to get rid of all the frogs before you left. The last idea I'm going to talk about is one of the best. That is why I saved it for last. I want to end the show on this note. This is the real key to high performance and maximum personal productivity. Single handle every task. When you have determined what the biggest, ugliest frog is, start on it immediately and then work without stopping until the job is 100% complete. No interruptions. When the momentum is broken, it's hard to get back. Consistent, persistent, massive action and get it done. Okay, those are a few of my favorite things from the book. And here is a little secret. If you go to YouTube and search for Eat That Frog, the audio book has been put up there by Brian's team for free. So give it a listen. And when you're done, head over to smithsbook.com and get another free audio book. Then come back here tomorrow for another summary of a great book. And tell your friends too. Talk to you tomorrow.